So this happened over a few years ago, so that myself and while my wife was in our room. For context, I'll try to describe this as best as possible, what happened, and what led up to this event. I've been a serious drinker since my first drink. At 14, I had my first drink, and the feeling of being buzzed would outweigh the feeling of being alive and sober for the rest of my drinking days. I was adopted after being born, so I grew up not feeling a part of, so drinking would be the only thing in my life that made any sense, if that makes sense. Anyways, I was incredibly obsessive over things and always into ghost stories and things of that nature. This turned into trying to contact spirits through Ouija boards, ghost hunts, watching gore videos when drunk. I was incredibly suicidal for as long as I can remember. Fast forward to me being up around 32. I've had an amazing woman who's still my wife. At the time, she was about to leave because I couldn't stop drinking for the life of me. I wanted to die for the longest time, and the night she told me she thought she had to leave, something broke. I don't know how to explain the rest because I've never had any other experiences or have seen anything, or even felt anything remotely close to this. But I had my wife and she was about it. I had gotten sick the year before with an unknown stomach issue, probably due to stress, so I was just falling apart. This specific night, when something broke, we both were in our apartment alone. She had just told me she felt like she had to leave. I started crying over my sink. She said she'd never heard me cry like this, and a dark presence came out of me, or lifted off of me, into our room. She was in bed, because this was late midnight. So I join her in bed and I say, there's something evil in our room. And she replies that she notices it as well. This is not something that I saw with my eyes, but I saw it within my mind. A huge dark presence above our bed looking down on us. A heavy, evil presence. One that I have known. It was almost like a friend or a person that you know well and that you've spent time with. I tell my wife this and she's talking me through it and also starts praying. Remind you, I am not spiritual in any way only depressed and suicidal most of the time. My wife is very spiritual and tries to talk to me about this stuff all the time, and I don't really get it or understand it. Once this dark presence has been there for a few minutes, what I can only describe as a great loving spirit washes over the room, and something in me opens up and I get it. Me and my wife had conversations about that for 24 hours straight about the Holy Spirit, and I really want to make it clear. I do not go to church or pray or like the Bible at all. So this is a real experience for me that it's unexplainable. Since then, it's just been crazy. I'm definitely happy that I had that experience and life has gotten a lot better now. I wish I could say that was my last drink that night. I honestly thought it would be. I thought that's what spiritual experiences did. But I did eventually get sober and have been for the last year and and a half and been happily married with a young, crazy son that will turn two in a few months. I'm posting this now to see if anyone else has had any experience like this. What are your thoughts? August 2018, we decided to visit the Stanley Hotel on vacation. We checked in, and while the others were grabbing our suitcases, etc., I went up to see our room. Inside the room while I was waiting, I heard what sounded like young girls screaming. It sounded close, but not very loud. I looked in the hall and out the window and saw nothing. I woke very early the next morning, 6.45am, and thought I heard a young girl singing. It was quiet, but clear. Everyone was asleep, nobody in the hall or outside the windows. I wasn't scared, just curious. There were three large windows in our room. Old style, no screens. You have to push them up to open them. Painted over a few times so they were hard to open. One of the windows slammed shut twice while we were in that room. Slammed so hard that a small piece of wood broke off of the frame and landed on the floor. On the second night, we switched rooms with the other family members. Now in room 321, all quiet at bedtime. But very shortly after we settled in, My husband said he couldn't sleep. He is not a believer in spirits. He said the room suddenly felt strange, and he felt like someone was watching us. After he fell asleep, I thought I heard a radio playing. Sounded like an old transistor radio. 
I looked over at the cell phones to make sure they hadn't started auto-playing something. They were both dark. A minute or two after that, I heard what sounded like a man whispering very close to my ear. I couldn't understand any words. A quick look at Hobby saw he was facing away from me and sound asleep. Shortly after that, just as I was drifting off, I felt two distinct pokes on my pillow, as if someone used their finger and tapped the pillow hard. I looked at my husband, he was still facing the other way and snoring. None of these things scared me. I was busy trying to analyse and found them interesting. In the morning, we found the flashlight on my husband's cell phone was on. He said he hadn't touched it, and remember, I looked at the phones after hearing what sounded like a radio, and they were both dark. Putting my bracelet on that morning, I noticed two bruises on my arm. I hadn't seen them the night before when I took my bracelet off, and had no idea how they got there. They matched perfectly with where an index finger and pinky would sit if my arm had been grabbed with force. I hadn't. My daughter, an adult, came in as we were all leaving for breakfast, and I noticed a large scratch or rash on the side of her neck. She had no idea it was there, how it got there, and said it didn't hurt. It had faded and was gone by evening. For some background information, my family is from North Carolina. My papa, grandfather, was born and raised in rural western North Carolina. And my mama, grandmother, was from the middle slash eastern end of the state. My mama is Native American, with her family living in the same area as far back as the 1890s. Being a Christian didn't stop her trust in the beliefs of her people. She was born with a veil over her eyes, which is basically where part of the amniotic sac detached at some point and attached to the baby. Within her family, this was taken as a sign of the child being sensitive to paranormal activities, and growing up, it proved true for her. Fast forward to my birth, and I was born the same way. My mama was both pleased and worried when she saw. Almost everyone on my mother's side of the family fully believes in the existence of ghosts and the like, all having their own experiences over the years. My very first experience came at around seven. I remember sitting in my mama's living room watching television with her and suddenly smelled something burning. I panicked, thinking I'd left the gas stove on, having just roasted myself a marshmallow on it, and that it caught something on fire. Before I could say anything, my mama, she looked over at the door and said, Come on in, E. I was obviously confused, and I asked her what she meant. She went on to explain that my papa's sister had died in a house fire in Korea years ago. She had apparently gotten two of her children out and went back in to get the youngest and didn't make it. When they found her body, she was something like five steps away from the front door. My mama explained that it wasn't long after that they began smelling burning rags in the house. It typically lasts just a few seconds and disappears again. My mama believes she just come to check in. I smelled that same smell many, many times over the years growing up in her home, and would look and look for the source of the smell, and never found one. In the years since I've moved into my own apartments and homes, I've smelled the same smell. It lasts for just a few seconds, and then disappeared. I spent most of my childhood in the eastern part of the state with my grandparents, but as my mom and her siblings grew up in western North Carolina, most still lived there and all of my papa's side of the family was there, so trips there were frequent. In the fall, my mama would go up and pick apples, buy the trailer full, and take them back and sell them. My second encounter occurred when I was in middle school. It was fall, and I remember, because as I bolted back out of the house and tried to get to my mama, I tripped over the trailer holding her apples, and ended up eating dirt. Then. I had to hobble around with a busted shin for a few days. Anyways, I went inside the house to get my mama's drink for her, and as I walked past the hallway that led to the bedrooms, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. When I looked, I was frozen for a minute. At the end of the hallway next to my grandparents' bedroom door was a woman I'd never seen before. I remembered she had long, loose, dark hair and wore a blue plant suit, thinking of a really old woman going to a church. She looked at me and smiled slightly, 
As she turned her body to fully face me, my legs remembered they could move and I took off. I explained to my mama what I saw, and my stepdad immediately moved to go inside because he thought someone broke it in through the back door. Something that wasn't really common in our area, but not unheard of. My mama quickly waved him off and took me inside, hidden in a photo album in a closet. She pulled out an old black and white photo of a woman standing on a porch and asked if this is who I saw. It was, and this was a picture I'd never seen before and apparently one of the only two she had of her mother. My mama sat me down in the living room and explained it all to me. The outfit I saw her in was the one she was buried in, and while she normally kept her hair up in a tight knot in order to keep her out of her face, while she picked cotton, or cooked, or just whatever she was doing, they decided to leave it down for her funeral. This was all shocking to me. My mama didn't talk much about her mom as she died when my mama was very young, resulting in her dropping out of school to take care of all of her younger brothers and sisters, and then eventually all of her half brothers and sisters. My mama is the oldest of 18 children. The final encounter I'll write about is one directly related to the other two. About three and a half to four months after I saw the woman in the hallway, I got sick. Not just a little sick, but pretty bad off. This was in the 90s still, and while my mama believes in doctors, she also believes in the medicine of nature. It's not something I'd ever use for my children now, but I also know that it works. So if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, I've at least got some medicine. I was given the medicine and wrapped in blankets. My fever peaked at around 103, and I spent most of the day huddling in my mama's lap until my mom decided that I needed to just go to bed and give my mama some space in case I passed the illness to her. My mama reluctantly agreed and carried me to bed. I'm not sure how long after I went to bed that this happened. I had fallen asleep at some point, but I woke up and it was pitch black in my room. I suddenly smelled burning rags and then left the blankets being taken off at me. The cool air felt great against my skin and then whoever it was started humming. It was a song that my mama often hummed to me when I was small or in this case, sick. They started rubbing my back and continued to hum. I mumbled and asked my mama to bring me some water and the answer I got back was, she's coming baby. I turned to look and sitting on my bed was not one person, but two. My mama's mom and the other woman I recognised as my papa's sister, whose picture my mama had pointed out on the wall after she told me the story of her death. I want to say I wasn't scared, that it absolutely wouldn't be true. I was terrified, but about that time, my bedroom door opened and my mama came in with water and medicine. When I looked back at my bed, both women were gone. I told my mama what happened and told her that they knew she was coming, and she simply responded, Figures. I'll never just mind their own business. I later found out that all of my mama's children had similar experiences as children when they're sick. And even now as an adult, if I'm really sick or something of that nature, she comes to visit and hums the song while rubbing my back. I know these aren't really scary, and I definitely have my fair share of terrifying experiences with the supernatural, but I figured that it would be nice for some people to see that they don't always mean you harm. And it's funny, because even as I was writing this out, E came in and passed through the house, causing my seven-year-old to run into the living room screaming about something somewhere being on fire. It was New Year 2019, and my family was planning on going out with my aunt's new boyfriend's family. I didn't really know any of them, and in the past I usually hated loud stuff like New Year's. It kind of annoys me. So I decided to stay home and chill instead, because I was tired anyways. It was around 9 or 10 p.m. when they finally left and I had the whole house to myself. We have a kind of big house because I live with four other siblings. It wasn't lonely though. I very much cherished any alone time I got. So I went upstairs and started watching Friends back when it was still on Netflix. I watched a few episodes before getting bored, making a snack and heading back to my room downstairs. I watched YouTube on my phone for a bit before I started hearing something. My house has two floors, and from downstairs, even the slightest of footsteps sounds like Nagasaki. It's horribly loud, even if you're trying to be quiet. 
probably old wood because of how old this house is. I try to ignore the creaking, using that old excuse that it's just the house settling. That's until it kept going. It just kept on happening again and again. A faint creak, like footsteps of somebody trying to be quiet. Of course, this unnerved me, so I decided the best thing to do was to face whatever it was. Kind of stupid in hindsight, if it had been a robber. I took my metal baseball bat that I always kept in my room, and slowly made my way upstairs. I hadn't heard a creak for a little while, so I was hoping it was nothing. Once I got upstairs, it seemed fine. Until I noticed something. The fucking TV was on, and playing the Friends episode that I had left off on. This scared the fuck out of me, being that I would never have left the TV on. I had 100% faith that it was turned off. But here it was, fully on for no reason. I ran to the corner of the room so that nothing could sneak up behind me, and held my baseball bat close. This was terrifying for me, but I was still doubting myself. That's until I heard the creaking again, from downstairs. I was so done. It was around midnight at this point, so the fireworks going off weren't helping my situation. I decided to dial the police while fearing the worst. I kept the operator on the phone while checking my downstairs. And it was nothing. There wasn't anything at all downstairs or upstairs. The house was completely empty. I apologised to the operator and hung up. While on edge for the rest of the night, there wasn't any more other incidents. I'm 31 years old now, but my whole life I've been able to see and communicate with ghosts, sporadically and especially in my youth. Ghosts to me always showed up looking like regular people, and I wouldn't know they were ghosts except for the peculiar circumstances of the interaction. The way they spoke or made eye contact with me, or appearing in places and situations that aren't usual, etc. One of my most vivid experiences was talking to a girl when I was nine years old. I had just moved into my new house and she was standing in my driveway when I got out of the car with my parents and family around. I said, hi, my name's Todd, who are you? She responded, I'm Jenny. I asked, do you live here, Jenny? And she said, yes. I said, cool, want to be friends? My mum came around the corner of our minivan and asked who I was speaking to. I told her that it's a girl who said she lives here and asked her to say hi to my mum. At that point, I noticed she wasn't there anymore and looked around and under the car and was surprised she was gone so quickly. My mum was pretty horrified but never mentioned anything to me about it for years later because she was kind of taken aback about the whole thing. I saw many other weird encounters over in that house and surrounding town after and found out some eerie stuff about it. Like continuously seeing a boy with a red wagon standing in the woods by the side of the road later finding out he was a child who was hit and killed by a car. I hear a lot of ghost stories involving hearing or seeing things, but not much in the way of being able to interact and communicate with them, and also how human they seem when you do. It was virtually impossible at first glance for me to know when a ghost was a ghost, mm -hmm. until I was able to better sense that each time something wasn't fully normal. I still to this day remember the conversation and outfit the girl was wearing, down to the smallest detail, and it still trips me out how much my brain has held onto that memory. Brown hair down to her shoulders with brown eyes, green tank top, pink shorts, I don't remember seeing shoes, probably around my age at the time, 8 to 11. When I was in college, my grandfather died. What was tough about that, other than his death, was that I was not aware of it for three days and I wasn't allowed to come home from school for the service. I got no closure, none. In my grief, I dug through the only images I had of him and found the most recent one, Christmas, three months prior. He's sitting on my family's couch in a distinctive pose, legs crossed over each other, arms folded in his lap, a serious look on his face. He had dementia, so the look was more common towards the end. I chose to take the photo on the wall next to my bed. It was right above my nightstand. 
I was very aware of it and looked at it often. The schedule I held was rather busy. Things were constantly happening in my day. Start from waking up well into the night. It wasn't uncommon to go out for the evening. And in this particular evening, I got drunk. I came home and passed out. The next day, after getting ready to leave for the day, I realised I couldn't find my wallet. I looked around the room and in my clothes from the prior evening. I looked under the bed, in the drawers, pulled the sheets back, under furniture. Couldn't find it. At first, I felt that it must be in the room. I didn't panic. I did, however, have a little stress. This is pre-cell phones. My debit card was actually non-existent. It was an ATM card, that's all. This means I had no money, no way of getting more out of the bank, no student ID that had some money for food on it, and no driver's license. After a couple of weeks, the panic does start to set in. I've searched my room multiple times at this point and called everyone that was with me, as well as went back to the venue to check lost and found. No one has seen it. I began to have trouble sleeping. I would nap when I could during the day. One evening, I went to sleep and had a vivid and immersive dream. I walked into my room. It's afternoon. I can tell by the way the light is coming in the window. The room is laid out exactly as it should be. All items in their place, including the way the sheets were earlier in the day. Shevel. I've started the experience at my entry door to my room. I walk forward and towards my bed. I go to my nightstand looking for my wallet again. When I don't find it, I look up and see the photo of my grandfather, sitting stoic and still, with his right arm raised and pointing to his right. I stare at this for a moment and it feels completely natural. I woke up. I look around my room and find it's night time. I'm definitely confused and wondering what just happened. It takes a few moments and I sit on the bed trying to process the dream I just had. As I work through it, I recall the photo and the pose. All the hair on my arms and neck stand on end. Do I risk a look? I couldn't do it. I was so sure the pose was different that I assumed I'd see it. As I look, fear and curiosity got the better of me. My grandfather is sitting in the pose the photo was taken in. His demeanor is the same. This makes me a little more curious. Why was he pointing? I take the photo down and hold it while studying the scene. I know every inch of the room he's in because it was my living room. The thing he was pointing at was the front door, but that doesn't make sense. I put the photo down and think about it a while I do some work. It hit me. Maybe he wasn't pointing to something in the room he's in. I put the photo back on the wall and envision the pose again and try to determine where he was pointing in my room. I look and it's a direct line to the foot of my bed. I go there and start looking for some unknown thing, not knowing if this was just fantasy. I pulled the comforter back and wouldn't you know, a place I'd looked so many times over days and days was holding my wallet this whole time. I looked in it and everything was there. No more panic, no more worry. Twenty-two years ago, I lived in a house on a lake. I rented a room from a lady that lived in the other room. I had been living with a good friend, but moved out and needed a new place. My parents actually found the listing in the newspaper and set me up with it. Aside from the strange living conditions of living in a two-bedroom bungalow with a complete stranger in the middle of nowhere, it seemed like it was going to be nice. My new housemate had a large dog that actually kind of freaked me out a little. However, she was a super sweet dog. My housemate was never home. Between work, her friends and her boyfriend, I saw her all three days after the three months I lived at the house. So, I took care of the dog. The thing about this dog, she would hide under my housemate's bed until she was hungry or needed to go outside. Never having had dogs, didn't know any better. The first month wasn't anything to write home about. Got some awesome photos of the moon over the lake. Somewhere in this time frame, I started recognising the facts above. I also started getting a weird vibe in the house. In fact, if I wasn't in my room, I wanted to be in there only. I also only felt safe during the day. I use that term because 
feeling at night was the same as if you think something bad is about to happen. The problem was, you couldn't quantify it. I started hearing knocking noises randomly in the ceiling near the kitchen. I figured it was birds, because there were a lot around. One afternoon, I decided to check out the attic crawl space located above the kitchen cabinets. It was a wood door with a single lock and latch on it and a fixed handle. I had eaten lunch and climbed up there to check it out. Opened the door and didn't feel threatened or anything. I peeked my head in and looked left and right over the bedrooms. Basic attic, nothing special. I closed the door and climbed down. From that moment on, everything changed. The dog came out to the kitchen and stared at me. Didn't move. It honestly made me very uneasy. I tried the tricks. Outside, treat, play. She didn't move. So I went to my room and shut the door. In the weeks that followed, the events became more and more unnerving. I began to stop being able to sleep. I turned to leaving music on overnight. Very low volume, but on. As time passed, I got to where I felt like someone was standing in the corner of my room. One evening, the alarm clock radio in the living room turned on on its own. First, I didn't know it was even there because I never went in there. Nothing in there was mine. Next, over the last two months, it had never gone off. I asked my housemates when I saw her next about that and she denied setting it. She was visibly confused as to why it would go off. I began to feel as though I was being watched in every room. I felt as though the figure in my room was always there. I began to wake from sleep for no reason. I began grinding my teeth at night. I moved to sleeping with a black light on, the lowest light level I could get in that room. Music became CDs that would repeat indefinitely. Now, I would wake up, look around and see nothing and then try to get back to sleep. My housemate and a friend were at the house one evening and the friend claimed to be psychic. She looked dead at me and asked me how I'm sleeping. I hadn't seen the housemate in weeks and hadn't told her about my problems. She then tells me there's an old man in my room and he doesn't like me. I asked if there was anything I could do and she said no. I began addressing this man and asking him to leave me alone. Life got much worse. I would be on the phone with my now wife and would fall asleep. She would tell me years later there were strange sounds that scared her. She said she would stay on the phone to ensure nothing happened to me. I began to have regular nightmares. Every time I closed my eyes, my work started to suffer. I was exhausted. I began to see a dark, cloud-like mist that appeared to pour out of the cinder block wall with the lights on. In the corner, the man had been reported standing in. I would walk over and touch the area. Nothing there. Go back to bed, see it's still happening. My wife was getting ready one morning, and while putting on makeup, she told me the face wasn't hers. She left the bathroom and didn't go back. That night, we were both asleep. She had become accustomed to my nightmares at this point. I had a dream that she and I were in my car and driving down the road. It was nice. I look at her and then back on the road in time to see three children in the, w in the road. The next sequence happened so fast, I had no time to react. Each face hit the windshield and appeared zombie-like. I immediately awoke. I was sweating, shaking and scared. My wife was instantly awake also. She asked what happened. I relayed the above story. Her face lost colour, and she looked very concerned. Thinking it was the content of the dream, I apologised. She sat silent, long enough to make me wonder if something was wrong with me. She broke the silence and said, Just before you woke me, I dreamed that we had just gotten into your car. We left, and the next day, I found somewhere else to stay. We moved to another state, and the first night in the new place... I slept non-stop. I woke up rested and recognised the silence in my head. A buddy and I bought tickets to do a ghost hunt at a local attraction. It was an investigation at this attraction that was known to have unexplained phenomena. The attraction is aviation based and housed several authentic and vintage World War I and II equipment. We began the night 
with an open but sceptical mind, assuming it was a funhouse effect type stuff. We'd seen ghost hunters and understood the equipment. We also had no expectations. The investigation was as we expected, tour, equipment use. Having never been to the venue, it was cool to see the displays as well as the stories of the equipment believed to be behind the occurrences. We had some knocking and or strange noises that weren't really explainable, however, we're forgettable. The night sort of ends in the banquet hall, where they had dinner at the officer's mess. It was a piano and a nose of a B-24. The entire room was World War II decor. My buddy and I chose to sit at the far back left corner of the room, away from everyone, because we assumed there were parlour tricks and wanted to debunk it. The rest of the group sat at various tables near the front of the room. During an EVP session, the piano started playing a few keys. No one was sitting at it. There were knocks in response to questions. It was cool. I got up and walked from the table we were at to the B-24 nose, just because I wanted to look at it. When I got within a foot of the nose, I felt like someone was behind me. I assumed it was my buddy, so I turned to see. When I turned around, there was a full white body that looked like a woman in a gown standing there. I could see through her and could definitely see my buddy was sitting at the table 20 plus feet away. It struck me that I had a K2 meter in my hand and attempted to use it, but by the time I brought it away from my hip, the figure was gone. No readings remained. Coolest experience on a ghost hunt. I was driving through Valley Forge one evening and it happened to be the night of the super blood moon last year. Whatever type of moon it was, it was gigantic in the sky and super bright. It was beautiful and I decided I should take a picture of it. While driving, I saw a parking area that had the gate open. So I pulled in but stopped at the entrance, I'm not going all the way into the lot. It was about 9 p.m. I stopped the car and got my phone. I opened my door and stepped out to set up my shot of my camera. While I was standing next to my car and aiming my camera, I began to get an intense feeling of dread. I had every hair on the back of my neck and arms standing at attention. I started to feel as I was being approached. I dreaded the thoughts and decided to risk a look. When I turned around, all I found was darkness. However, the feeling got worse. I actually felt like I had found the source but was unable to see it. I turned around again to face the moon and was shaking. I said into the night, I just want to take a picture of the moon and I'll be leaving. With that, I felt a slight reprieve and I took two photos. I didn't think either was in focus or even what I wanted to take a picture of. I was so scared, I went snap snap and quickly got back in the car. I shut the door and quickly put it in reverse. No way I was driving into the lot to turn around. I never stopped there again at night. The picture's so bad, it's not even worth sharing. This one is from last year. I didn't work for the same department I was in in the first story. This one is in the northeastern US and situated directly across from a large cemetery. This firehouse has two rooms situated off the bay. They're not connected to any room and are on the outside wall of the building. I had chosen the frontmost room this evening. We had a busy shift. It was a long day with lots of calls and our departments also did transport for hospitals. So we had a few long distance calls that took hours to complete. I had been on for about six months. It took me almost no time to fall asleep. However, after years of working in this service, I found I need music to soothe me to sleep. I had it on and set a sleep timer for it to turn off. I always set an hour. I usually pass out after about 15 minutes of the music and go deeply into sleep. This particular night, I had done just that. While snoozing soundly and completely unsuspecting, I feel someone lean over me and get very close to my ear. The pressure of this person was very intense. About the moment I realise someone is doing this, I hear a very loud yell. Leave! It woke me instantly. It was pitch black in the room. 
I couldn't see anything. This added to the chaos. As I lay with my eyes wide open, I said out loud, What was that? The sound of my voice echoing in the room gave me a reference for how loud the voice was. It wasn't as loud as mine. It was, however, loud enough to be if I had spoken softly or quietly into the night air. I became super freaked out and turned on my phone light. I looked around and honestly found what I expected. Nothing. It took me almost two hours to go to sleep after that. My first firefighting job was in a small city with two stations. One was older, the 1970s, we'll call Station 1, and the other was newer, 2004, Station 2. Korea Department with Combined Fire and AMS. At the time of the story, I was new and had only been on for maybe a year or two, years as a firefighter in EMT. First story takes place at Station 1. The guy spoke of weird occurrences constantly. Most had had weird things happen they couldn't explain, story after story. I hadn't really had much more than creepy feelings in different parts of the station since I started. There were parts I wouldn't go in due to the overwhelming feelings of being watched. This station had a crew bunk room where all the metal beds were laid out along each wall. There were six total, four on the hallway and entry door wall and two on the opposite wall. The room was well illuminated by the exit sign next to the two beds on the far wall. A soft red light at night, combined with the visual acuity of having been asleep, the room is easy to see and make out detail. The entry door from the hallway had all manner of device attached to it to keep light out and make the bunk room dark. The window was covered with foil and again with a black cloth taped on four sides. No light shined through at all. The bottom of the door had a piece of cardstock that a crew long ago had attached to keep light out. When the door opened along the linoleum tiles, it made a soft but distinguishable clicking and dragging sound. The hinges made no noise. Now that you have a picture of the room, I'll get to the story. Being a rookie, I was last to bed every night, doing chores and taking out trash. Everyone had already turned in and most were asleep. I took the bed one over from the door. This evening, we had two empty beds. I began to fall asleep and heard the door open. I didn't think anything of it because it's not unusual for someone to get up and use the restroom during the night. I assumed I hadn't heard them leave. I peeked my eyes open and could clearly see the engineer and one of the ambulance crew asleep. In my head, I named who I had figured it to be. Then, the image of the room flashed in my memory again. Everyone was still in bed. I opened my eyes again in time to see a dark figure walk past my bunk, centre of room, turn towards the two beds and disappear. I was certain at this point that there was someone that shouldn't be there. I got up and looked, but both ambulance crew members were snoring. The engineer was snoring. Someone who had just come in wouldn't be asleep already. I checked the hallway and couldn't find anyone. I returned to my bed and within a minute or two, I heard the unmistakable sound of a pass alert and full alarm. The device in our air packs that makes a loud alarm when we stop moving for 30 plus seconds. It's activated by turning on the air bottle, twisting a knob several times, and deactivated by draining air and pressing a button twice. I walked out in the bay to find the lieutenant's air pack was the culprit. First. He was a stellar firefighter that wouldn't do something dumb like leave us pack on. Second, he went to bed over three hours before at this point. Third, our last call was nearly five hours back. I checked the bottle, the knob was off all the way. I bled the air from the regulator. It was so minute it made a quiet sound. I turned off the alarm. To this day, I can't explain the air pack or the dark figure. Now, Station 2 has individual bunk rooms. I had one that was my usual. One night, I had a horrendous nightmare about my son dying. It was a very real feeling and moved me emotionally. I finally broke out of the dream and woke up sobbing. When I sat up, in the pale green LED light of the smoke detector, 
I saw a dark mass go from standing next to my bed to quickly shrinking like it had turned toward the door to leave. I was obviously frightened and turned on the light. There was no one there or in the hallway. Another night, I was in a room cake corner from my usual. I was absolutely asleep. I felt as if someone leaned over me, got right next to my ear and whispered, we're getting a call. As it processed in my head, I started to open my eyes. No one was there. When I tried to figure out what had just happened, the tones dropped for a call. There was never a radio or paper in the rooms. Overhead dispatch speaker only. Of my experiences, this one was just strange, not scary. Right, so I've had a long past of weird, unexplainable activity happen to me in the UK. I won't state all on this post, as I feel like it needs multiple different posts and sections. However, I feel like some base information is necessary. I was born in Surrey and lived inside a cemetery for five years, with my dad working as a cemetery manager. He would often dig graves, do funerals, and complete house searches on recently passed people. When I was five, we moved into a house 30 minutes away in which the wife and child had passed a while back and the husband was selling. The date we moved in was the 20 year anniversary of the wife's death and my mother swears she saw a lady out of the corner of her eye standing, holding a sharp object that soon disappeared when she tried to get a better look. The room I was given was the child's room and there were no problems with the rest of the house other than needing a good fix up. Fast forward to 2016 and my father has been working in a new cemetery for over a decade, doing the same such things as grave digging and house searching. However, this is where it gets a bit more freaky. Around 3 or 4 a.m. on multiple nights a week, I would be jolted awake by the loud sound of a music box playing from my built-in cupboard opposite the bed. It would be loud enough for me to wake up and would play the same tune constantly until I would get up to look for it. By the time I would get to the cupboard, it would slow itself down eventually to a stop and the room would go silent. This has happened multiple nights a week, every week, and still does to this day. I also had a dream a few years back in which I heard the music box. I thought I was awake but I was dreaming. So I went to search for it. I opened the cupboard and to my surprise, I found a deep hole in the back of the wall with the music coming from inside. I put my hand in and instantly got my arm grabbed by a black, nearly rotting hand with very long fingers, maybe one and a half to two times larger than normal, and very sharp nails. This jolted me actually awake, and where I always closed my cupboard door, I awoke to find it was wide open and my arm covered in long scratch marks. I've completely cleared out my cupboard and searched its every nook and cranny, and there's no music box to be found. After about a month or so of hearing this music, I thought I was going mentally ill and assumed I was developing some form of hallucinogenic disorder until I managed to capture it on video on multiple occasions. All forms of explanation we've tried to come across have always been easily disproved and I'm desperately looking for some sort of answer. I don't personally completely believe in the paranormal but the longer it goes on and the more stuff I experience I can't seem to get the lingering thought that paranormal activity exists out of my head. I have many more experiences, if anyone would like to hear, and I hope to get to the bottom of this. The first time I had ever encountered this spirit, who my little brain at the time dubbed the curly hair and glasses man, was when I was around five or six years old. We had moved back to New Jersey from Florida to be closer to family because around this time, my cousin had passed away at 11 from cystic fibrosis. I also believe this spirit wasn't my cousin, as he was more adult sized and my cousin didn't wear glasses or have curly hair. We spent a lot of time with my aunts, uncle and cousins, and we were all really close. When you walk into my aunt's house, you enter a small closed in porch before you enter into the living room. If you stand at the front door, you can see straight back through the living room, through the kitchen, and into the back bedroom, where a door leads you down to the basements where my much older cousin made his room. 
Me and my two cousins were in the porch area listening to the radio. I can still remember Gangster's Paradise by Coolio was playing when this event occurred. And I couldn't listen to this song for such a long period of my life because it scared the shit out of me. All of the adults were in the basements hanging out while the three of us girls were playing. Suddenly, I watched the bathroom light turn on and this darker than dark shadow emerged from the bathroom, walked into the kitchen and disappeared in thin air by the fridge. I looked at my cousins, they definitely saw it too because they were scared shitless. And being that I was so small and terrified, I instantly started screaming bloody murder ran my little chubby self through that kitchen and downstairs into the basement, where obviously I was met with all the adults thinking something really bad happened. We all told them there was a man in the house to which my uncle and my dad booked it upstairs and found no one. I explained he was dark, you couldn't see anything, but I saw the outline of glasses and curly hair, if that can make any sense at all. But even though all three of us girls were bugging out, they just did their best to console us and make sure we were okay. Fast forward years down the road. I've had my fair share of weird experiences through the years, but what got me the most is that after all this time, that same curly haired and glasses man had shown himself to me twice in our old house. I was home alone, sitting in the corner of the living room on the computer. My dog at the time was laying next to me on the floor. As I'm playing my game, I got a super strong whiff of lavender for just a second. And you know that creepy feeling that someone is watching you? Well, Hoss, my dog, picked his head up real quick and looked to my left, right by the TV. I looked over and that curly haired and glasses man was peeking over the side of the TV at me. He pulled back behind the TV the second I saw him. I had quickly gotten off the computer and went outside to just wait for my mom or dad to get back home. I was so scared, and I think I was more in shock, because the last time I saw him was when I was so little. I had so many questions that just didn't and wouldn't get any answers, but mainly, why is he here, and has he been here this whole time? The last time I had seen him was in the same house. I remember I had this crazy dream, I have no idea what about, but I woke up completely out of breath. As I opened my eyes, the curly haired and glasses man was literally standing above me, arms held behind his back, as if he was like, hey, you okay? He was gone in a second, but it was him. And this was the only time I had ever woken up so shaken and out of breath, even to this day. But it was weird, because it was like he was getting closer to me with every encounter. My parents know all about this spirit, and being close to my 30s now, I've never seen him again. I'm kinda hoping he doesn't decide to reappear randomly on me since he showed up so late in my life after the first experience. But the more I thought about it, I realised I was terrified in the moment, given it was a paranormal experience, but I never got bad vibes from him. I have no idea who he could be, and I don't think I'll ever find out. But that was the last time I saw him, nearly 15 years ago. I had cancer when I was four and five years old, died quite a few times during a coma at a hospital that diagnosed me with AML. My mom would tell me sometimes I would say, I saw grandma after I was brought back to life, even though I was still in the coma. I talked about how my great grandma is my guardian angel, how and when she passed. And I brought up how she shows up in my pictures and protects me from the ghosts that are attached to me. So this all started back in 2004. I was four, when my mom, dad, grandma and grandpa noticed I had started showing signs of a cold that grew increasingly worse at an alarming rate. After several doctor's appointments a week, my mom finally snapped on the doctors and told them to do something rather than give me more medication for colds and flus that obviously weren't working at this point. So they decided to misdiagnose me with Kawasaki disease, causes inflammation swelling and redness in blood vessels throughout the body. After starting to treat me for this disease that I didn't have, I got worse and developed aspirillus in my lungs. At this time, I was being treated at a known hospital in Reno, Nevada. I won't name names, but it was under a different name at the time I was recovering treatment, but was switched over to a children's hospital in Oakland, California. 
That's the hospital I would live at for a little over a year, as they were the ones who caught renal hospital's mistake and discovered I actually had acute myeloid leukemia. They also discovered the growing fungus I had in my left lung, so they removed it. But it caused both of my lungs to collapse and forced them to put me into a medically induced coma. I was only under for a month, but in that month, my family, especially my poor mother, were forced to watch me suffer through what would be the worst part of my treatment. As at multiple points, I had flatlined, died to put it loosely, and during these moments, my mother, as she was the one who lived in the hospital and ICU with me, had to be escorted out so they could resuscitate me. Once I was brought back and put under control, my mother would be allowed back in and pray she or I wouldn't have to go through another one. This is where my experience starts. Quite a few times, after the moments I would flatline and be brought back, my mother would be left alone with me again and somehow, I, while still in my coma, tubes weaving in and out of my mouth, nose and body like an oversized, overstuffed pink cushion, tape holding my eyes shut, I would manage to say, I saw grandma. My mom didn't believe in the paranormal until then, because once I was taken out of my coma, there was one subtle change about me. Every time my picture or a video was taken while I was in the hospital for the remainder of the treatment, white streaks and orbs would be formed over my body or around my body in the surrounding room. Sometimes they'd be far, like in the background or close. Now, it doesn't happen much today and I blame the fact that it's because we have phones now rather than the rinky-dink cameras and camcorders we had back in ye old 2004. But sometimes I'll still see these streaks and orbs in my pictures and videos, especially when I have the privilege of getting to use a disposable camera again, or even my Polaroid. I have so many Polaroids that I couldn't hang because of the streaks and orbs covering my face and all body. You're probably wondering at this point, who do I suspect? Well, rather which grandma I suspect is my guardian angel, and that would be my great grandma Imogen. She was the daughter of Irish immigrants, being her third and last great-grandchild to have got to meet her before she passed, I was only a baby though, we feel she may have a deeper connection with me. She unfortunately passed in a car accident by a semi-truck that ran a red light and had slammed into her car. Her friends, who I call aunts today, made it, but she didn't. My grandma says she always feels her presence and she sees my grandma Imogen in me and my little sister. My parents recently bought a farm last year in Australia and have been building a property on it for their retirement. It's right beside a national park and reasonably close to the next property over. The only thing that sucked is that we have no cell service besides the top paddock where they're building their house. Not too dodgy, right? Well, I'm a university student in my second year of nursing and frequently come up to the farm to help them out with their livestock and whatnot. At first, Everything was fine. We had a small two bedroom cabin in the lower paddock that I stayed in every time I came up. My room had a large window that faced into the national park and at night when it was pitch black it would freak me out a bit but nothing serious. Sure we had the usual noises of foxes and the livestock at night time and nothing out of the ordinary. Things really ramped up when I had to stay up there alone to feed the livestock for a few days while my parents were back in the city. I went about the usual chores, feeding the sheep, keeping an eye on our lambs and checking in at the building site to keep an eye on everything. I went into town to get some dinner at the local pub and by the time I got home, it was roughly 10 p.m. I would usually take my car up to the top paddock at night to call my friends, check social media, etc. My car was lit up by my internal navigation system that's always on, which meant I couldn't really see outside the car besides from my headlights. I was midway through my social media scroll and I thought I saw something black flash across the paddocks where my headlights were facing. I drove my car in a quick circle to use my car's headlights as a massive torch and didn't see anything. No reflections of cattle's eyes like I usually do or the usual fox or rabbit. I tried not to pay too much attention to it and went back to my social media scroll until I accidentally pressed my brakes 
which allowed my brake lights to flood the paddock behind my car with an eerie red light. The same black flash that I saw through my windshield flickered out of the corner of my eye in the rear view mirror. Now I got suspicious. I turned off the music I was listening to and just sat for a second trying to assure myself I was just tired. After a few seconds of silence, I was relieved and was about to turn my car on to go back to my cabin. And that's when I heard what I can only describe as claws on my rear windshield. Tap, tap, scratch. I never sped as fast as I did back to the cabin that night. That night, I couldn't shake the feeling of something watching me in the forest. You know that sort of tingling sense of something staring into the back of your head? After tossing and turning, I put a newspaper in front of my window that faces the woods until it was completely covered and the feeling immediately went away. Sleep didn't come easy, safe to say. The following night, I chose to go to the top paddock while I was still reasonably light. All was reasonably peaceful and I had all but forgotten last night's events. I was admiring the gorgeous pink sunsets and I saw a flash of green in the sky travel for a split second and then disappear. Now listen, I'm not one for UFOs, but I know it wasn't a helicopter because it was light enough to see the sky and the stars weren't even up yet. I thought it was cool, so I called with one of my friends who's a massive skeptic about everything paranormal and of course, she thought I was nuts and proceeded to give me shit for it. It started to get a bit dark for my liking, so I went back to the cabin to cook some dinner. All was fine until I went back to sleep, the newspaper from the night before still clinging to my window. I woke up around 2am to the sound of the sheep making a racket. I grabbed my dad's rifle, assuming it was another fox and went to take a look on foot with my spotlight. Now usually, when you bring a very bright light and piss off the sheep who are already going nuts, you hear about it. Keyword being usually. I walked over to the paddock and started scanning with my spotlight and didn't see anything. The sheep were bleating like crazy, but none were injured or even remotely in a corner of the paddock huddled together, like they usually do when there's a fox. That was until they all went silent. One second they were so loud they echoed around the hills, and the next, it was dead silent. Now I was truly scared. I raised my rifle and started looking around, feeling like everything around me had its eyes on me. It was then, as I heard a thump of something heavy being dropped on the ground. Heavy enough for me to feel the vibration in my feet. I booked it back to the cabin and locked everything behind me. I was pacing around, double checking the doors and windows when I heard it. It sounded like humming but distorted alongside footsteps. These footsteps weren't human though, it was as if it was limping and then quickly recovering around the cabin and stopping at my bedroom window. I curled to the ground, gripping my rifle until my fingers were frozen in place. That was how I fell asleep that night. I left first thing in the morning without even looking to see if there were footsteps. Now if anyone has any clue what's happening, what this thing is or can tell me what I can do, please let me know. I haven't been able to go back to my parents farm. In the original Star Trek series episode titled The Day of the Dove, synopsis, a malignant force that has existed since the beginning of time invades the Enterprise, causing chaos and bringing the crew to the brink of destruction. Under its influence, crew members clash with the Klingons until Kirk comes up with a surprising new solution. Those who study poltergeists should watch that episode. Study it. In my first book, The Bothell Hell House, Poltergeist of Washington State, I name a chapter after that episode. The resemblance and experience Tina and I encountered to that episode are just too uncanny. On the TV show, objects, for example weapons and other battle paraphernalia appeared out of nowhere, conveniently in the path of both Kirk's crew and the Klingon captives. Definitely a form of apportioning. A similar event happened in the Bothell House. Around Tina or in her direct path, it was always women's jewellery, jewellery that didn't belong to Tina. This brought about heated debates and rightfully so. No woman wants to find another woman's jewellery in her home, let alone her bedroom. 
Let her alone on her bed or bathroom countertop, and sometimes shower room. For me, IT professional, it was the destruction of my electronic equipment. The destruction or theft, disappearance of, my sci-fi movie paraphernalia, for example cards, CDs, comic books, etc. What was left in its place? What items that belonged to Tina? Suggesting she was the one that took those collector's items. Here we are accusing each other of something we didn't do. It's during these heated debates and verbal exchanges that the poltergeist activity escalated. We're talking to extreme levels on the other side of the house. Spontaneous fires, larger objects thrown, blackouts, exploding light fixtures, furniture levitating and being thrown, power surges, exploding wall outlets, and yes, apparition appearances. Manipulation or orchestrated events are the words that come to my mind whenever I'm compelled to reminisce about the events from beginning to end, 2012 to 2016. Captain Kirk's solution to the poltergeist on the Enterprise? Lightheartedness. Did that work for us? Sometimes. 80% of the time. By the time things escalated in our house, the damage was already done. Massive physical damage and yes, emotional damage. So let me preface this by saying that I've only had two real paranormal encounters that made me put two and two together. First, when I was about a freshman in high school, my mum bought this really old Catholic Bible from a thrift shop as a decoration. In what was probably about a month that we had it, my mother tore her ACL, I had a subflux rib, my brother broke his finger and got a concussion, and my sister also got a concussion all of these happened while we had the Bible in our house. My mum and I both have a spiritual discernment and she felt an uneasiness about that book. My rib wound up being the indicator because it miraculously started to get better once my mum got rid of that Bible. My second encounter with anything paranormal was last summer when I was in my college apartment with my girlfriend. When I got there, I felt a little off, but I just brushed it off. We were about to go to sleep when she suddenly started freaking out. She's repeatedly seen the hat man, a tall shadow man with a fedora or top hat over her life and that will relate again later. It's dark, but there's a little light pressing through the closed blinds from the street lamps in the parking lot. The way my room is laid out, there's a little shadow cast next to the door from my closet. She tells me that the hat man is standing in that shadowy corner, looking at her. I see nothing, and I tell her it's just her mind. We're both religious. I'm Baptist and she's Catholic. She asks me to say a prayer, so I do. And I kid you not, I see a tall figure darker than the rest of the shadow turn and walk out through my door. That's when I really started believing that this paranormal stuff is real. This made me start thinking that the room she lives in at her house might be cursed. My girlfriend is very prone to injury and has had two hip surgeries a sinus surgery, broken her arm, has constant muscle pain and battled severe anxiety and depression while in that room. She's always felt uneasy in that room her whole life and has seen the hat man on multiple occasions. When I stayed in that room, I also felt uneasy at night. Her mother had a medium come through the house and said the darkest any energy in the house comes from my girlfriend's room and the attached bathroom. She also says that every time she sees the hat man, He's walking out of or away from her room, like he starts there and moves out. The thing that really makes me think that the room is cursed is that her family members have seen the hat man coming from my girlfriend's room too. Her younger sister lived in that room for a brief period and in that time both saw the hat man and broke her tibia and fibula. Another thing I find odd is that her family has four dogs and the one that sleeps in my girlfriend's room every night is the one that they have to take the vet the most. Seems a little too strange to be a coincidence. One part that I find weird is that her family built that house when she was very young, so it's not like a previous owner could have cursed it. It's also in a well-developed neighborhood with houses fairly close together. So if the land is cursed, would the other houses have issues too? Also, why just that one room specifically? And why does it seem to be the Hatman's origin spot? 
Anyone have any ideas on what to do? Or if my theory about the cursed room is correct? Sorry for all the questions, but I'm genuinely curious to see what other people think.